good. Welcome, 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 welcome. It's the last Monday in the month of March. But even though it's the last Monday, we still have what? what? Six, seven more days. Seven more days. Ah, uh, the, the month apparently oh. ends on a Sunday. This the 31st. Month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think we long months, yeah. man. Oh, they just had to be that one it's day. Just one extra 24 hours. Now. Yeah. Calm you down. Know, it was yesterday. I was something, something made me go to calendar. And I saw that mm. March was 31. I was like, oh, this wow. month. Wow. This month. Okay. But hey, come on. It's the last week <laughs> of the month of March. Good morning. Mm. Welcome. It's Wake Up Marjorie. And we're here to give you that inspiration. Uh, not just perspire, aspire to perspire. This is real inspiration we're giving you to start up your week the right way. One thing we can tell you is that Wake Up Nigeria is a place where we are licensed to thrill you like with top-notch TV content, and we've specially curated it just for you. Ooh, yeah. that's what we do. Mm. Create us. Now, we offer an array of amazing delights with a splash of sunshine this Monday morning. Mm. Well, um... When last did you see flowers, Titi? Um, I know you're a flower person. A lot more recently than you, I would like oh. to admit. <laughs> <laughs> when did you stop being a flower person, Titi? Uh, uh, well, that's the thing. When it started, you know, they charge it in dollars now. It's in dollars. Oh, my. They weigh it. And then if someone <laughs> sent you a bouquet, flowers are expensive. Yeah, I appreciate very, them, especially very. when they're fresh flowers. Yeah. I don't see artificial flowers no more. But that's what we do, of course. <laughs> we give you that wonderful thing. Monday, just pick one rose from the bouquet. Mm. And uh, if it's hibiscus, you know it's Zobo that's coming for you. Wow, wow. <laughs> We're hoping to kickstart your week, your day, by sprinkling just the right amount of, uh, you know, joy, mm. yeah, happiness, joy. inspiration, and of course, premium family entertainment. All right, the week is a new chapter and an opportunity for you to be in control of your own narrative. So come on, tell a story about yourself today. Mm. I hope that story you are in charge. Yeah. And write a good one for yourself. My name is Titi Laya Oni. Mike Messi Keno is mine. Use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC across all our social media platforms to be a part, to interact with us, to engage with us, of course, for visibility. And uh, we will be there to respond yeah. to you. Remember, you can also watch the show live from absolutely anywhere across the world. We have a mobile app. It's available for you to download on Google Play or iOS. Now you can watch us, we're live on Go TV. it's channel 16, on the ultra high frequency, the band is 49, that's talking about terrestrial band, yeah. and of course, uh, follow us on those handles that you put the hashtag, mm. okay. So IG, or mm. they call it Instagram, Instagram, yeah, IG, IG X, X, TikTok, uh, TikTok LinkedIn, Facebook, we're all there, we're all there. TVC Entertainment underscore. Alright, also okay. live on YouTube and X, you can watch the show and tell your friends mm. to tell a friend to join us as part of the show this morning. So I guess we should get into what we're doing today. Definitely. Being a Monday, Definitely. it makes sense to have some motivation. Ooh. The okay. topic is successful workplace communication. Interesting. Now, it's about effective communication in the workplace. workplace. Damin Lola Ogunremi is an etiquette image consultant with experience working with major organizations, corporate individuals, schools, and much more. It should be a very interesting conversation and for our SME segment we'll be having a conversation with Tochuku Aderi Bigbe of Omalicha Hostesses now we're going to be taking a look at how to maneuver in this type of business the highs the lows when it comes to events and so much more and then we then, have yeah, we've got Rosemary after yeah. SME Rosemary has been here before but hey come on it's great to have people who made an impact here again She'll be here for performance and of course to sit down. All wow. Right. Yeah, so Monday. Uh, yeah, Monday. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the, watching the, um, I saw the, the company that we're talking about, SME today. Ushering. Okay. It just brought back some memories. Oh, I did a lot of those. It, you know, it was it, for uh, I, 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 that, that, that industry as it, as it is served quite a number of people, young yeah. girls who are making their way into entertainment because I know mm -hmm. a lot of people who were booked steady, yeah. you know, yeah. doing such jobs, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and it, it was, it's, not, it's not so easy, but at least <laughs> it helped a lot of people put, you know, pay the bills and do some other things, you know, help them and all of that. And uh, yeah. So uh, for me, big shout out to you and others who ushered at a point in time. You yeah. make an event colorful. You make an event more organized and all of that. So yeah, that's that's not a joke. It helped to build joke. confidence. Oh the, yes, the mindfulness of being able to serve. To serve, yeah. Yeah, so it's and, like you know, you're serving in corporate events, and you're getting to meet very interesting people, people that yeah. you probably would never have the opportunity to meet on a normal day. Yeah, you know, true. even though you're just there to be part of essentially part of the decor, and of course. 
uh, you know, lead people to where they're Then, of course, you're going to meet yeah. unpleasant people. Yeah. It's almost like customer care. Mm -hmm. It's almost like mm -hmm. customer care. You're going to meet unpleasant people and then how strong, to manage them. There's things that happen. Though. I, I'll give you one instance. Okay. Um, so there was, uh, there was a com company that branded yellow. I'm just going to put it like that. Okay. And there was a particular event. That the supervisor said, always greet the ladies first. If Whoa. they're with... A then lady. If they're with a man or okay. with a husband, greet the ladies first. And I didn't understand why. Okay. So um, there was a colleague of mine, uh, also an usher, who just happened to greet the man first. And the, I, maybe the smile was too bright or maybe her hand lingered too much in the handshake. I don't know what happened. We just said, why? <laughs> yeah. That's why what we heard. Uh, the, the wife gave her one on the face. What? For holding... The man's hand for just a bit, maybe it was just a bit too long. Maybe the handshake was just a bit too, I don't know. But it was funny. That was not funny. That it, was... It, was, it was funny, but it was, we, we had literally just been warned, greet the ladies first. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Wow. So that actually happened. And there are other stories like that. So, maybe, so maybe that tagline <laughs> about ladies first might just be something to help you. Maybe a lot of things. Ladies yeah. first. Well, you never know. The man might have some kind of, you know, backstory to that as well. You mm. never know. They might be. Yeah, man. yeah, true, true. Mm -hmm. Hello and good morning. It's time for a news update right here on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Tite Laya so Thank you for joining us. We begin right here in Nigeria as Nigerians woke up to the cheery news yesterday that 137 out of the 287 school children abducted from Kuriga in Chikum, local government area of Kaduna State, have been rescued. Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, confirmed that the victims were rescued in Zamfara and will be handed over to the Kaduna State Government. Lupe Asom reports. 17 days of uncertainty and fear. Finally, they got a glimmer of hope as their kidnapped children regained freedom. Jubri Gwadabe, a parent, shared the agony he faced not knowing the fate of his daughter Aisha, who was among over 200 students abducted at a school in Kuriga on the 7th of March. Jubilation, in fact, jubilation all over the village. Jubilation. <clears throat> that number I cannot tell you now. We wait to tomorrow. If all of them are back, if still, still many, some are remaining, we're going to talk to the government because we've not seen them all. Pictures of the children later emerged, showing them looking tattered and stressed. For Jubrin and many others, each day without knowing the whereabouts of their children brought heart aches and sleepless nights. We've been feeling very bad, very, very bad, because we cannot expect a small child, seven years, nine years, ten years, you know, in this, in the hands of bandits. How, you know, no food, you know, no drinking water. The Nigeria Defense Headquarters early Sunday morning confirmed that 137 individuals, comprising 76 females and 61 males, were rescued in Zamfara. Zamfara State is about 230 kilometers away from Kuriga, and this implies that the children had spent days in the forest trekking. Major General Edward Buba, the Director of Defense Media Operations, stated that the military, along with local authorities and government agencies nationwide, conducted a coordinated rescue operation to secure the hostages. Their rescue was cheering news to the state governor, who had visited Kuriga, assuring them of efforts to reunite the students with their parents. Our children who were abducted from Kuriga community, I'm happy that they are back home now. They are with us, and police have played a major role. Governor Sani also welcomed the Inspector General of Police Special Intervention Squad and two armor personnel carriers deployed to tackle ongoing security challenges in the state. Now that we have two more APCs in Kaduna, I believe the police command in Kaduna will certainly have something to use that will certainly help us. After hours of waiting, the families of the children are being told they would have to wait till Monday to reunite with their children. This marks the end to a distressing chapter and the beginning of healing and recovery for the affected families and community. Lupe Asom, TVC News, Kaduna. President Bola Tinubu has welcomed the news of their rescue, emphasizing the importance of collaboration between the federal and state governments for more positive outcomes, especially on matters of security. The president commended the National Security Advisor, security agencies, and the Kaduna state government 
for the dispatch and diligence with which they handled this situation. He also assured Nigerians that his administration is deploying detailed strategies to ensure that the schools in the country remain safe, sanctuaries of learning. Our Wake Up Nigeria continues after this break. All sure. right. Welcome to What's Up and About. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to today we're going to have varieties Monday. So there's a lot that happened over the weekend. So we'll yeah. be talking about quite a number of things. Yeah. I just saw this now, just to get it out, we can do with uh, the family and friends of Amechi Monago. Oh, he passed yesterday. Yeah. Um, very sad. No, I've spoken about it here at different times uh, where he called for help for yeah. uh, kidney related uh, Issue. issues and all of that. And uh, very we can do with friends and family. Well, yeah. We pray that they find the fortitude to bear, to bear the, the loss. loss. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, there, from there? there are, in, in terms okay. of health-related issues, All right. uh, you know, it's, there are a lot of people going through a lot of different things. Oh, yes. You oh, know yes. when they say the rich also oh, cry? Yes. Oh, yes. You know, oh, yes. there are a lot of people um, living with, you know, things that they don't share. Um, and one of the family, the most famous family in the world, I'm talking about the royal family, yeah. have had a have had a similar situation. Uh, mm. Apparently, Kate Middleton, that is um, um, William's wife, mm. now the future king of England's wife, future, future queen, uh, has apparently uh, been diagnosed with cancer. Okay. Uh, the type of cancer is not clear, uh, but she... Uh, the king, by the way, was diagnosed earlier also yes, with cancer. Um, right. That's uh, Prince, well, King Charles. King Charles, um, yeah. Now, the issue is, it, it was so important for her to come out and talk about it because there was so much speculation and as to why she had left public because, service. Because she did not. You see, uh, for British royalty, a lot about their personal lives is the... Um, uh, 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 a lot of our personal lives are, in some ways, when it comes to discharge of their duties and all that, are public knowledge in yeah. such a way that they have a responsibility to, the, yeah, the to, public, to, yeah. their, to their subjects, mm. as it were, yeah. to keep them updated in those kind of things. And so when it comes to their health and all of that, it's quite big. They want to know how their favorite monarchs are doing. And, you know, all of this came to head when a picture was released mm to, I, don't, I think it was Modern Sunday, uh, yeah. to celebrate Modern Sunday. I'm not very sure of that. And it was edited. Yeah. And the picture was edited. edited. Yeah. And uh, in number the major... Some people thought it was her lookalike. Yeah. They thought it was her look. You know, it was she edited. Has so, well, look yeah. Mm -hmm. So, of course. And uh, some major publications took it down, mm -hmm. and then others followed suit. And then there was now an official statement to apologize for her. So it seemed like mm -hmm. there was something happening that they didn't want Public. The public, uh, their subjects, they didn't want their subjects to know, you know, and uh, I, I think she had to finally come out with this. Now, this is someone who is considered an icon, not just a fashion icon, but someone filled with grace. Um, now, when she even gave birth, in few hours after, for most, I think the first two of her children, she was out at the, the door of the hospital, I think St. Mary's, and looking all, you know, glam and everything. And like, it, she, she actually looked like nothing could take her out, right? Mm. She's always had that stoic, always perfect look to the whole world. And mm. then suddenly something is affecting her on this level. We've yeah. seen her since January. So what was going on? So um, there are a lot of people going through a lot of things and a lot of things happening on Earth. A lot of um, issues with the environment have been attributed as causes for cancer, for instance. Yeah. Uh, and um, in recognition of um, the, issue, uh, the issues on Earth right now, we have uh, an event that happens, I think it's biannually, it's not annually, it's biannually, Earth okay. Hour. Okay. So it's, I, I'll tell you a funny story. We're at a particular event uh, with a hotel and then there was a notice saying that the hotel was going to participate in Earth Hour and we're wondering what, what happens. They say they turn off all their lights. So all around the world, uh, different monuments turned out their lights for Earth Hour on Saturday 23rd. Um, that was this Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Mm. So for the first time in a very long time at 8.30 p.m., the Eiffel Tower, the Sydney Opera House, uh, some major monuments around the world turned out their lights. Their lights, okay. Just to recognize or in recognition of Earth Hour. So now when it comes to... Um, doing things for the earth now. Uh, people might not understand what one hour of power actually means. Um, so a lot of these monuments, like in Rome, to light up those places is multiple, multiple generators that you would have to use if you're in Nigeria okay. to actually fuel 
the lighting for these for those places. So it's a lot of. It's power. a lot to turn mm -hmm. that one off. Mm -hmm. All right. Think about it. Okay. All right. So, uh, 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 but I, and I, I'd mentioned this at different times about how we would, um, uh, when it comes to light here, yeah. using light during exactly. daytime, yeah. 12 noon, you're walking yeah. through a street, and then all the shops, the lights are on and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, for us to ensure that we have power supply that is regular and all of that, we need to make sure that we save, where we don't, we keep, you know, we don't, we don't um, waste it. That's so where, people don't, don't see it power. as wasting power here. A lot of people, in my opinion, see it as using what they believe they are owed. They are because, owed. Because, uh, you know, there wasn't light yesterday, so now that so now light, the light is there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so moving on, just one more trend I just want to mention. Meidi was trending over the weekend, and okay. yes, and it was about money that he owed a waitress or oh, a waiter okay. at something, okay. and it was about... Mm -hmm. oh, is it 11K or... It one? 11,000 naira. 11,000 naira. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and uh, you've heard this thing about how... Celebrities yeah. go to places and then eat up food or take drinks and run in, even into millions. And yeah. then they let you go based on who you are, you know, self rec recognition or whatever. And then you start hearing there's, there's this particular club owner who at one point trended because he called out Selena and said, Look, yeah. these people ran me down, ran me out, yeah. of, out of business. Out of business. Yeah. And it ran into millions. And I'm like, wow, how do you feel? Mm. Uh, now, this is not just, I mean, 11 k might not really be. A, an um, issue, you know, he said he would pay. I don't know whether he made a joke no, about he actually, it. He actually said he, there was a follow up post where he said he was broke. And I feel um, like he was trying to be in some, I, I, I may be overly sincere okay. or maybe overly honest about the situation. Or, or insensitive. Just, well, I actually. What's your business? Think... Then if you're, if you're broke, then don't, don't go borrow. No, I mean, don't go, don't go owe without, staying, without, without telling the person where you're going to be paying. Understood. So that's not an excuse. Nobody Especially when you went to, you, didn't, you, weren't, you weren't forced to Nobody was saying it's an excuse. For me, like, that's insensitive. I hear you. Very insensitive. Now, her, why, now why, why, why she you, must have approached Maybe he's joking times. or whatever, but look, mm. um, you say people should leave me alone. I'm broke. What, what's that? People should leave me alone. I'm broke. If it was a it was joke, kind of snarky. it's quite insensitive. Yeah. Yeah. She should send her account. I'll pay her at the end of the month when yeah. I collect salary from my ogre. 11 KRB. So he wasn't, at, you know, at accepting the fact that he was wrong in that instance. He was just making it seem like it's a normal thing. Yeah, it's a normal and thing. And then don't worry, I'll settle it. You guys should leave me alone. Um, now, I, I have a feeling it's, it's something that has been happening a bit too often okay. in, the, yeah. in the space. So shall uh, you, this is one is just 11K. I yeah. mean, we, uh, we heard of millions. I mean, almost tens of millions at some yeah. point. You know, when you go and you want, you, you want to order those big drinks and then you cannot pay and all of that. So I... But why order them in the first place? What are you trying to prove? Mm. As in, I don't, I don't really understand. I don't understand. How do you go and make orders into these millions and then you leave? And then you go and then you're okay when you're owing somebody. How, are you, how do you do it? How do you feel? Sadly, <laughs> there are a lot of personalities yes. on that same train. On that table, yes. Maybe this could be a wake-up call for them. Maybe. Yeah, maybe not. I, yeah. Wake up to me. All right. At this point, <laughs> we have to take a quick break, but we want to hear your side of things. We would love to hear your thoughts. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC and let us know what you think. Good morning, of course. Welcome back. It's time to take a look at the headlines of the dailies this morning. Uh, quite a number of papers that we have here. There's the Daily Independent. We also have uh, The Nation. There is Punch. And, of course, The Guardian. We also have Daily Times here, so that's quite a number of papers here. Let's kick off with The Daily Independent. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Yes, of course. So for Monday, March 25th, after Kaduna students release Tinubu vows to make schools safe. Uh, the writer underneath that headline goes on to say, Afeni Ferre, Pandef, MBF, Lord, government security agencies and others ask FG to apply same strategy for other victims. And uh, police confirm four women dead in Bauchi Zakat collection stampede. Airport security audit, and just performance is with huge success. ICAO team leader Tinubu turns 72 on March 29, asks Nigerians to skip celebration over mood of the nation. Uh, Nasu, Sanu, and seven-day warning strike. Say walk resumes today. Unknown gun gunmen kidnap 10 artisans in Benue State. The Patriots uh, submits uh, declaration for new constitution to Tinubu and the National Assembly. And the picture story there is that of Governor Peter Mba of Enugu State receiving a letter of notification as Independent Governor of the Year, Urban Development 2023, from Don O'Kerry, editor of a Daily Independent in Enugu on Saturday. All of that on the front page of 
the Daily Independent. Um, let's uh, check there, just above the flag of the paper there. Uh, Nimet haps on effective early warning system to boost food security in Nigeria. And emulate Uti stop pensions to ex-governors. Serap tells Tinubu. All of that on the front page of a daily independent. And uh, from there, let's head to the nation. And we also have here Tinubu pledges safer schools after rescue of Kaduna pupils. Uh, DHQ to hand over 137 Kuriga school children today. Uh, teacher dies in captivity. Above the flag of the paper, how to tackle national debt challenge by experts who get Ondo APC governorship ticket. And uh, President OK's low-key birthday, Dangote votes 15 billion naira for food palliative, and Nasu, Sanu, and Strike. All of that on the front page. Uh, the point just, just above the flag there. OTOB leadership tussle deepens MLP uh, crisis. And then FAAC revenue agencies in 1.7 trillion naira should fall talks. And the picture story there is one of the rescued Kaduna students. Um, uh, we're very happy for that. Uh, I would say the students really, really look distraught there. Uh, not so pleasant pictures, but uh, we're happy that uh, they are released or they've been released from captivity. And of course, uh, uh, we hope that uh, such incidents don't, or such an incident doesn't repeat itself on Mars in that particular manner, in fact, or in any other manner, in any other way. Uh, from the nation, let's head over to uh, the punch. And we have here FG Plant School Safety Corps as 137 pupils regain freedom. And that's uh, the major headline on the front page there, Kaduna abductions. Above the, above the flag of the paper there, we can see OPS threatens to sue banks over rejected applications. Julius Beggar and MTN top as capital market loses 2248 billion naira. FG Plant's joint cable protection disruption lingers in six countries. And uh, we can see there, uh, beside the flag of the paper, their fans mourn as veteran actor Amechi Monago dies at 61. Quite a sad one there. Palm Sunday, which was yesterday, Gaza Christians seek peace. Pope mourns 137 Moscow victims. And grieving families, friends demand justice for slain Delta corpse. And uh, Olubadon. Uh, let's uh, all Akulain's enthronement process begins on Tuesday. And the picture story, as you can see there on the point, is still that of the rescued Kaduna uh, pupils there. And then let's head over to The Guardian. And we can see here, living wage negotiations are hobbled by debts and poor execution in states. That we can see there. And then there is some sort of um, analytical uh, chat there. Uh, we can see Nigeria's minimum wage floor procession. Uh, that is the residents battle hunger over Okwama military crisis. And we can see insecurity. Tinubu's government has failed. Enough is enough. Say nothing elders. All of that on the front page of The Guardian. Then over to the Daily Times. How 137 Kuriga school students were rescued. This is from DHQ, the Defense Headquarters. Uh, Tinubu welcomes a safe return of kidnapped school children. Say schools must be made safe and secure for learning. That's the rider underneath that headline. Ijo National Congress demands justice for soldiers killed in Delta and debunks reports of its planned attack on military across Niger Delta. 72nd birthday donates to charity in my name, not birthday bash, says Tinubu. Uh, investment in agricultural pane, uh, panacea to insecurity and poverty. That's from Obi. Uh, abductors of Edo PDP chairman contact family and demand 500 million naira ransom. And that is on page 9. Uh, above the flag of the paper there, Nasu, Sanu and NAAT suspend warning strike. Direct members to resume work. And all of that will be on the front page of... Uh, the daily times uh, i think that's all for the papers that we have this morning yeah so you can grab any of these papers to check out uh the headlines there and what is happening there all right uh titi is on standby there i see some grips there titi <laughs> i don't know i have a little there's a rumble in my tummy 
It's not going boom, bada, boom, bada, boom. It's actually doing me, ew, ew, ew. I'm just thinking maybe grips might help me there. What are we doing with grips this morning? How did you see grapes all the way from over there, Mike? I don't understand. Which kind of I've eyes, X-ray vision do you have? I tiger. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Wake Up Nigeria Kitchen. We are back on a Monday with Chef Alice. Welcome back, Chef Alice. Uh, this morning, good morning, good morning. This morning we'll be chip them baking. Um, we are making something really we are special. Make, yeah, we are making special akara. Mm -hmm. And, ah, in fact, mm. you need to be in this place at <laughs> the moment. Mm -hmm. As you can see, tapioca in the making. All right, you tapioca. You can afford to mix this. So honestly, I am so interested in seeing your recipe for tapioca and akara. Let's talk ingredients now. Let's talk ingredients. Which one are we so making first? We are making the akara now. Okay. So in the akara, we are going to make use of beans. Okay. So this is the beans that we are making. Mm. So this is olotu beans. Okay. Some olotu. People call, yeah, olotu. Some people call it drum. Drum. It's, okay. Yes, it's okay. different from a waoloni. Okay. Or the okay. white beans. Okay. So this one now, we are going to peel this. You pour water in it with your sieve. Mm. You peel it very well. After peeling, you add your ginger and your onions mm. inside it. Okay. Then after doing that... Yeah. So how long, how long does it take for you to get all those skins off? Does it take very long to no, wash no, no, the beans? No, 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 no. Under 10 minutes, I'm done. Okay. Under 10 minutes. All right. So we have our beans. What other ingredients are we using here now? Then mm. I have crayfish. Okay. That I'll add inside the beans. Crayfish? Then, yeah, I have okay. crayfish. Fantastic. I have salt and I also have um, salt and seasoning cubes. Seasoning cube. Okay, all right. So yeah. seasoning cubes, onions, ginger, crayfish are yeah. all on display here. This onion and ginger, are they also going into the akara? Yeah, it's going up. In fact, okay. that is the major ingredient. Okay, all if right. If you really want to enjoy your beans, you need plenty of onions and ginger. I'm seeing something different here. What is this? This is cloth. Clothes. Okay, we so to use that in, the tapioca. in the tapioca. Fantastic. You enjoy the smell. All right, fantastic. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen cloves. I know it's used sometimes in like pepper soup um, and some other dishes, but uh, I'm going to see how you're going to make this work. And of course, what Mike saw from afar the grapes. This, I, this is to garnish the tapioca. tapioca. So this is uh, coconut shavings. Did you shave this coconut by yeah, yourself? Yeah, yeah, I did that. This or was morning. it uh, grated? Or? No, 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 no. I grated it. Okay, all right. I removed the bag okay. and I grated it. Now, there's also one. Okay, there's another bag back here. This is coconut yeah. milk, I that believe. coconut milk. Right. I extracted the water out. Yourself? Yeah, I extracted right. the water Fantastic. out. Fantastic. Now, there's some people that use the, the one in the can, but this is uh, even better. This is the fresh one. Straight out of the coconut yeah. itself. Beautiful, beautiful. All right then, Chef Alice and I are going to get to work at this point. The first thing we need to do, of course, is wash the beans. Uh, and once we're done washing the beans, we uh, get the onions ready to blend in, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, so your ginger. I know some people use the ginger with the skin. No, do no, you, no, do I'm, you going, peel? I'm, I'm going to wash and peel it off. Okay, wash and peel. Now let's talk, talk a bit about this tapioca now. Um, I'm not sure what tapioca actually is made of. Can you tell me? Tapioca is made of cassava. Cassava, okay. Yeah. You the same peel, cassava used for gari. Yeah, and... that's the, the same cassava used for gari. Okay. So the way they made it, you are going to peel, wash the cassava, mm. peel it off, then you grate it as well, okay. then you dry it to dry in the okay. sun. Okay, fantastic. Then we, right. There's two types of um, tabioca. There's small, small one, and there's big, big one. The big, we'll see some that will be bigger than this. Okay. In the process of spreading, you mm. need to use your hand to break it okay. so that when it dry up, mm. you have it small, small. So the difference is that like this small, small one mm. now, so you can just soak. You may not soak it overnight. Okay. But the other big, big one, you have to soak it overnight. This one should take like um, 40, 45 minutes okay. in soaking. So, so I know that you've fine. soaked some before. I want to show them what it looks like once you've soaked it. Now, you soaked quite a bit. Yeah. All right, look at this. Now, this is a lot. But how much tapioca was in here? How many cups of this made this? Because I know that once you soak cassava, 
it swells. Yeah, it swells. Right? Swells. So how many cups of this are in here now? I have 10 cups. 10 cups of this. Yeah. Wow, and it just comes out flaky like this. Yeah, yeah. You wash right. it when it's soaking, no. Mm. Please, you have to wash it like six, seven times okay. to avoid stone. Okay, it. okay, fantastic. Yeah. All right. So this is the tapioca soaked. And uh, obviously, we've also put together some of the beans already blended uh, and with the spices added as well. So uh, please talk to us about what's in here. Apart from the blended beans, what else have you added? I've added my onion and my ginger. Onions and ginger. Uh, no other spices? Nothing no, yet? No, no, no. Okay, so what's the next thing we're going to add to this mix now? So I'm going to add my pepper go inside ahead. it. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, the pepper, oh, the pepper isn't here right now. It's somewhere under here. Is there any other ingredient that we're going to add to this now, apart from the pepper? Seasoning. Seasoning, all right. Let's yeah. go ahead with the seasoning then. Uh, I know that you have to be careful with seasoning, uh, Akara, because... Um, you know, you can't really gauge how much seasoning or salt to put in until you taste it, right? Yeah. All right. Fantastic. So I'm seeing you put in just maybe like a pinch of salt. That's what I do. And then I think about two cubes of seasoning powder there. And after that, I guess we stir. We didn't mention the vegetable oil earlier on. <laughs> That's true. We didn't. Yeah, that's right. true. So we the vegetable it. oil is going to be used for frying. Okay, fantastic. I've added that on the fire already. Can we add? Any, can we use any other type of oil apart from vegetable oil? Yeah, some people use palm oil. Hmm. That's okay. we are going local. Local, right? <laughs> All right, then. Now we are definitely excited about what Chef Alice is putting together. She's gonna throw in her crayfish and of course her pepper is. I think it's yet to be blended, but she's going to throw that in as well. Uh, but yeah, we would love to see what you are putting together at home as well. Try it out. Try out tapioca pudding and akara this morning. It might be something you want to use to maybe even break your fast in the evening. It could be something that you use for a really good, healthy breakfast in the morning. All right. Actually, tapioca is very, very Beautiful. good and very light to break fast on. Mm-hmm. Let's go, everyone. We have a quick break. We'd love to see yours. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. Let us see what you're up to in the kitchen. We'll be back after this. Thank you for staying with us. And our topic today is a successful workplace communication. We have Damilola Ogunremi, an etiquette and image consultant with experience working with organizations, corporate individuals, schools, and much more. It is great to have you. Oh, welcome. Good morning, Mike. So... When you say successful workplace communication, what exactly do you mean? What makes communication in the workplace successful? Uh, there are lots of strategies that if you implement in the workplace, you can enjoy a harmonious and productive environment, working environment leading to profitable uh, or improving the profit uh, bottom line, rather. So let's just look at a scenario here. Uh, imagine you want to correct a, an employee mm. will seem to be messy. Okay. I'm late to work. They don't keep their desk clean. Clean. Okay. It's, you know, it's not out of the ordinary to say, to get angry and say, you're messy, you're this, you're that, you're you, you, you. So there are other ways, there are techniques or strategies you can use, as I've said, to, to make the, uh, your communication positive instead of negative. So I call it using positive language. Okay. So you want to correct an employee now, you use a positive language, okay? Instead of using you, you in general, you know, we Nigerians, as Charlie, we are fond of saying, you are wrong, you kept me waiting, all those things. But when you come to the working environment, you want to watch the kind of language you use. So instead of saying you, there is you that. Mm. You use what we call the I perspective. The I message. Okay. You can say, I would like to see your desk clean. Imagine or oh, another scenario where, uh, you know, you're in a meeting and an employee just speak up about an op opinion. Okay, maybe we want to ex execute a project and the employee have a different opinion. So of saying, oh, we don't do things like that in this place. You can just say, I appreciate your input. We'll look at it for, and if you don't want to look at, consider the opinion, you can say, 
but let's do things in this way. That's one. So the number one thing you need to do to implement a workplace, a successful workplace communication is using positive language. Mm. Delve away from the you perspective because you, in terms of addressing a person's thought, infers um, a condemnation. Okay. Which can make an employer or a person to retreat into themselves. Imagine you, you're in the workplace and your mood is already spoiled for the day. Tell me, would you have a productive work day? You might not, but then you have a responsibility to so work. You have a responsibility, but I and mean... At times, I'm just saying that, um, yes, it does matter to have uh, maybe the right mood. And yes, all that, the but right mood. When, when, when you're paid for something, you have a responsibility, irrespective of your mood, to deliver some sort of service, what? especially if there are standards. I, that I place. know. Can I ask, have you, haven't you seen a situation where people just that? Because in, uh, by month end, they will have their salary paid to them. Mm. So instead of creating such um, a negative atmosphere, why not do the right thing? Speak to your employees, respond in it in the right way. Another way you can implement a sexual workplace communication is to listen attentively. Okay. As I've said earlier, you're in a meeting and someone is trying to contribute. Instead of you just sticking to your own idea, you don't have to follow or listen. Another way you can implement successful workplace communication is what I call paying attention to people in your, mate, in your team, your subordinate. Imagine an employee is frustrated about executing a particular project. You listen. You call the person to listen to their concerns, their point, what they would need to do to make the project successful. Okay. It's another way. Mm, all right. So uh, with all of this, yeah, uh, you made mention of uh, that positive vibe and trying to get it from. So people would say that they are taking, uh, people are not taking responsibility for their things if you don't use you. Is there any way you can use you without being in such a way, in quotes, negative as it is? Yes. Were? When it's not blaming, I've already stated that you can be used when you, oh, can you help me to get the paper? Can you help me? You can use you to, to, to send an errand, to execute a project, to get something. But when it comes to correcting people on the job, correcting a bad behavior, you infers blame okay. and so can dampen the Morale. When you do all of this and you and you dampen the morale and love, but what are the what are the pitfalls of unsuccessful workplace communication, as it were? You lack harmonious environment. There's less productivity. I just stay tender right now. But when you do that to a person, you feel okay. I pay you by month end. You get paid, then you have to do your job. You are just uh, going to suffer a less productive environment, an environment, a, a workplace environment that is not harmonious, is not happy. You know, a happy environment gives birth to a productive environment. So that is one of the painful. Another thing I've heard some people or some boss, bosses complain about, I ask you to get something done and you've not done it. Another way to implement successful workplace um, communication is to put a timeline on instruction. Okay. okay, I want to tell you that by the time I come back, I'm going for a meeting now, Mike, by the time I come back, get this phone working. You have not stated, that you've, not tell, you've not told me exactly when you want that phone to be ready, telling me that when you come, by the time you come back, you want it to be working. Mm. So when you give an instruction to implement a successful workplace uh, communication, you put a timeline on your instruction. Mike, by the time I come back, I'll be back by 3. I want this phone working by 3 p.m. Okay. So is there another thing you want to add that you think could help towards a successful uh, workplace via communication? Respect your employees. Okay. Listen to their opinion. Okay. Have a, 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 a listening um, ear. Okay. Consider other people's opinion. If you feel that people, there are some uh, companies where you can't just dump ideas, they expect you to have done your own work, then that's what really makes contribution worthy. So oh, okay. that, regardless of that, we listen give a listening ear, respect them. And another thing, use the appropriate channels to communicate. Imagine you have a sensitive uh, information to pass across to a, an employee. Don't send it via emails. You can do a face-to-face -face message 
which is appropriate for sensitive message. You want to send uh, an official message, you use email, you want to do meeting, do a video conference in a situation where you people cannot converge in the workplace. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I hope uh, people are able to learn something from that, how to communicate success, uh, successfully in the workplace. In the workplace. Yes. This is right. just fragment of effective right. communication. Thank oh, okay. you too. Mike. All right, All right. Uh, let's see, uh, Titi, how's the communication going in the kitchen there? Are we getting our food successfully? We have been frying away at our Akara. And uh, yeah, so when it comes to Chef Alice in the kitchen, you know, we're all confident, we're all set. We know everything is going to be great. Now take a look at that Akara. It's looking golden brown. It's doing really well in there. Looks good, right? Looks really good. Mm. So right now, what we did was we put, I think, tea, were they, it's a, spoon, a spoonful in the hot no, oil. No, 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 Wasn't no. Wasn't up to a spoon? Not up to a spoon Not that up to I a spoon. added to it. Okay, all right. all right, all right, all right, fantastic. So uh, let's just, um, you know, give them the ingredients one more time. When it comes to ingredients, what we had here was some beans. We had added some ginger, onions, some seasoning cubes, some pepper. Um, what else did we add? Crayfish. Crayfish was also added in there and it was mixed together and thrown into, and I say thrown, I say <laughs> thrown now, thrown into some hot oil. So um, as soon as she put it in the hot oil, it started to go golden so, yeah, brown so nicely. Really nice. Really, really nice. So okay, this so is just the quantity of what I'm putting into okay, the oil. Okay, quantity. Okay, come forward, come forward. They can't see you from back there. Um, so, <laughs> okay, so that's the amount. You don't need yeah. more than this? I don't need more than this. All right, fantastic. Straight in. Fantastic. Then if you are the type that love your akara to be flattened, oh. that type that you put inside your agege bread. Oh, oh. okay. You turn right. it, then you press it. Hmm, really? Yeah. Okay. Ah, That's like risky. Once it's it starts to scatter. No, it's, you can see that it did not scatter. All right. Fantastic. Now, this looks really good. It looks crispy and mm, nice. And it smells really great as well. I feel like making akara at home now. I feel mm. like making it. And hopefully someone at home is making their version of this as well. Um, now, some people have these ingredients lying around and they just, they, do, they haven't had the ginger to make their own akara. Maybe they're just used to buying it when they go out. Maybe you want to try it at home sometime later today. Make sure and you Akara is very, very simple to make. Mm -hmm. very, very, very simple. Very nice. Very, very nice. And All if right. you really want your children to enjoy it, maybe your One, daughter... Two, three, four, five, six. They're about six. Maybe your children don't like taking Akara. Just try to, to add little hot dog for them. Mm, they like, are the sausage. Time, like sausage, yeah. Okay. You add little sausage for them just to make them have it. All right. So sausage inside the main mix? The main mix, yes. Okay. Fabulous, fabulous. All right, so I'm always so Just to worried sensitize the children. that they're all going to stick together when they get in the oil, but no, 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 no. I've just noted that they're not. You can see the flat one. These yeah. are the two that we pressed the other time. Yeah, and these look nice and crunchy in there. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, so now we also have the ingredients for the tapioca still standing by. I know that you soaked the tapioca earlier. Yeah, I've soaked tapioca. And, um, so what's the next move now? We need a pot, yes? Yeah, I need a pot okay. to sort out my tapioca. All right. So now that you've soaked it, what's the next thing we need to do? I'm going to add my coconut milk. Coconut milk, okay. On the fire. Ooh. Actually, this um, tapioca, is you can make it in two ways. Okay. If you are the type like me, Mm. I love my tapioca to be smooth in my mouth. Okay. So that's why I came with this. Okay. So you can cook with the shredded coconuts. Yeah. Or you use the water only. Okay, fantastic. So some people actually like the... We can the... actually cook both anyway. Okay, fantastic. We can All cook right. the two. So this coconut milk, you made this yourself. You yes, extracted yes. this I coconut milk. I extracted the milk right. myself this morning. Okay. All right, got it. Right there. Okay, so that's the coconut milk. So it's nice and creamy. This on the fire now. So you're going to heat it up? Yeah. You're not adding anything to that at all? No, 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 I'm not adding anything okay, for now. Right. So which one do you want to use? This one at the top here, yes? Okay, fantastic. 
All right. You want it on low or? No, I want it high. First. Very high. Okay. And we're still monitoring this akara. akara at the same time while we heat up that coconut milk. So I've noted that this tapioca is quite thick and heavy. Um, that coconut milk that we have there, is it how many of these scoops of tapioca will I need for that amount of coconut milk? Well, it all depends on the coconut. There, if, you even see some people that don't add coconut milk to it. Some use ordinary water. Okay. But I love to add coconut milk to it. Okay. Because coconut milk is very, very healthy for the body. Fantastic. So for me to get all the nutrients that I needed for the tapioca, so I love to add all right. my coconut milk. It's definitely an interesting combo. I can't wait to see and what this turns it, to after. Garnish it with milk and yeah. your fruits, right. your favorite fruits. Fantastic. For today, we'll be using them um, strawberry. Strawberry so, so and grapes. And grapes. Grapes. We have quite a bit still to come right here on Wake Up Nigeria. And we will take a quick break and be back with more. Refreshing oh. is the best way to describe what has happened in the past hour, yeah. especially when you think of Akara and you think of grapes. Yes. But I thought about it in a different way, but Titi had to put me in line. <laughs> it was not that way. I was thinking the grapes will go inside the Akara. Grapes but Titi, how's it going? Akara. You can't fry grapes now. Who told you you can't? Well, well. You know people fry watermelon? Well, fried. I have seen fried watermelon. I know the one I like. I like roasted pineapple. So roasted. Ooh, you see? Roasted She's now even pineapple. exploring yeah. her creativity oh, when it comes yeah. to fruits. Oh, yeah. Mad. But you know what? That's all we had to talk about. But of course, yeah. <laughs> you think yes. you're a bandit. No, <laughs> no, really seriously. Yeah. You should try it out. But we have quite a bit to still do right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Now, as you've already noted, you know, the anchors are marvelous. The mm. chefs are awesome. Woo. And we could go on and on to talk about our wonderful array of guests. But yeah. and I'm looking forward, of course, to that tapioca and mm. grapes with the car. It's going to be a wonderful yeah. 45 minutes up next. Well, We've uh, had a wonderful one hour, like we, like she mentioned earlier also. We've had some discussions and all of that. But uh, remember, if you want to follow us online, it's at TVC Entertainment underscore. That's on X, yeah. on uh, Facebook, yes. Instagram, and of course, LinkedIn. There's also a TikTok account yes, to indeed. follow us. Yeah. Of course, use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC to interact with us across those platforms. You can watch us live on YouTube. Just search for TVC Entertainment. We're there right now. And you might be watching us on GoTV Channel 16 or UHF Channel 49 or Star Times Channel 121. Okay, let's get to what we have next. On our SME segment this morning, we're going to be having a conversation with Tochuku Aderi Bigwe of Omalicha Hostesses, taking a look at how they maneuver in that particular type of business. There are definitely some highs and lows, especially with regards to human resources mm. uh, in this particular area. So you should be taking this interview as, uh, as a former... <laughs> yeah, my, as, as, as a former... Yeah. Uh, Hostess, yeah, there are a lot of say. great experiences I remember and some really funny ones. I've well, like the one you shared, shared one earlier. <laughs> like the one you shared earlier. Okay, that all of course will happen in our SME segment. Then we've got Rose May Alaba. If you know if you've not heard that name before, well, she is the sister of uh, international footballer, Austrian footballer, Nigerian born of course, David Alaba. But she'll be here to perform and of course we'll have a sit down with her a little bit later. <laughs> She's so adorable. <laughs> My producer has said something now. Ah, She's amazing. We we'll arrest you, Zainab. Mm. This thing that you say now, you're, on a normal day, you're supposed to go to Kiri Kiri for this thing. <laughs> but yeah, Rose me alive with that wonderful song. Uh, yeah. Talking about, we just finished, of course, the month of love yeah. into the month mm. of uh, women's, uh, yes, women's yes, month. Yes, so yes. I'm looking forward to that one. There's still quite a lot of events still happening. Still happening, so yeah. amazing, yeah. A lot, there was an art event happened, that happened yesterday. My kids went for that with, with their dad. Um, it was called 234 Art. So you know 234 is the number for... For, for Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria yeah, Code. So yeah, yeah. So Nigerian Nigeria. Art. Yeah, so Wonderful. Welcome back. And now it's time for our SME segment right here on Wake Up Nigeria. And it's one I've been looking forward to. Why? Because this particular industry is part of why I was able to travel all over Nigeria. I was a hostess and usher for many, many years. With us today, we have... Tochuku Aderibigwe of Omalicha Hostesses. And we're going to be taking a look at how to maneuver in the waters of this type of business. There are definitely some highs and lows that we need to talk about. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I just mentioned that I, I, I did so many ushering jobs back in the day that, okay. in fact, I was, I was almost always out and about. 
Uh, but I, I didn't take it on as a full business okay. um, mindset wise. I didn't think of it as a business back okay. then. Okay. Uh, but you seem to have taken it to the next level. Yes. When yes. did you start? When did you begin? Okay, we've been there for like um, since 2006. Oh, six. Wow. Okay. Unofficially. Okay. But um, 2022, yeah. we got registered. Beautiful. Uh, because we needed to do that so mm. that we can be taken seriously. Mm. Mm. You understand? So right. we've been um, officially registered for like over two years. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. It's, yes. it's great to meet someone that has decided, you know what, this is what I want to do yes. and I'm going to focus on it. Yes. Uh, but then let's talk a bit about the name. Okay. Uh, Omalicha. Yes. Where did you get the name from? <laughs> okay. It's actually very interesting. A, a very in interesting story because um, back in 99, um, I used to work with um, um, a colleague and someone that I see like uh, a big brother. Okay. Um, his name is Martins Ndigwe. Okay. So back then, he, he used to call me Omalicha, Omalicha, Omalicha. You know, even at the time, it's, it's as if he forgot my first name. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so it's always Omalicha. Okay. So that's the first person. The second okay. person is Mrs. Ngozi uh, Jato. Okay. I call her Mama J. Okay. Because every time she sees me, it's Omalicha, Omalicha, Omalicha. She was actually the one that inspired the name. Okay. Because I, I finally was like, what else should I call my business? Omalicha <laughs> hostesses. Okay. <laughs> yes. um, so now you, you have, um, it has a feminine ring to it. When yes. you say hostesses, yes. it makes reference to female hosts. Mm -hmm. um, now, so this is you working with female ushers, female yes. hostesses yes. at different types of events. Yes, please. But um, when a client comes to you and says they need ushers, for instance, okay. what is the first step? Okay, the first step is to... Okay, ask what the event is about. Okay. Okay, what kind of um, ushers do you need? Okay. Do you need um, the fair complexion ones okay. or the dark okay. skinned ones? Okay. Do you understand? So they will now tell us, okay, because um, this event is, uh, has this kind of team. Okay. Is either we have a fair skinned uh, ushers or the dark skinned ushers. So they will tell us, that's the first st step to tell us the complexion mm. of an Okay, ocean. so then also the, I guess, eventually hostesses become part of the, the decor, so to speak. Yes. The, the theme of the, the theme. event. Yes. Uh, and this also puts a lot of pressure on the person providing the ushers. Yes. Um, how do you manage things like costume, makeup? Talk to us. Okay, we actually have um, an outfit company okay. for ushers. Okay. It cuts across traditional, English, corporate, okay. um, cultural, mm. do you understand? So we have an, um, an um, outfit company where we rent. Okay. So, yes. So you rent them out? To we rent them company. out. We, we rent them, you know, oh, on okay. a fee. Okay. You know, you rent them so that you can use them for that particular okay. event. Fantastic. So yes. you outsource that particular responsibility? Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Now, <laughs> you're, you're, we've talked about ushers as if they are, you know, mannequins so far. They mm -hmm. are human beings. They are human um, beings. And working with human beings means, you know, there are all sorts of things that can come up. Yes. Um, what is the process with how you source for hostesses? Okay. to add to your pool of hostesses, okay. and uh, what do you look out for? Okay, um, first of all, we look, at, um, we look out for looks. Okay. Uh, we look out for stature. Okay. And we look out for height. Hmm. Okay. Yes, because um, when, when a, a, a client comes to you, they'll be like, um, we need this particular um, type. Okay. Of yes. Stature. Yes. Of, of an usher, you okay. understand? So that's, um, that helps us okay. to give them what they really want. Mm. Yes. So, you know, you, we, we find ourselves in a time where there's a lot of um, body shaming out there. Yes. There's a lot of also skin shaming out there. Yes. Uh, so a lot of people would probably take offense to hearing things like, okay, she must be fair skinned or <laughs> she must um, have... Uh, you know, front and back, back. <laughs> or she must be very slim. Okay. You know, have you ever, you know, had conversations with your clients on this, on maybe mixing 
uh, or changing their mindset towards body positivity? Okay, it, it's actually, um, most times, uh, it's, a, it's very, uh, it's actually few times okay. they, that they ask for a particular stature. Okay. But most times, mm -hmm. we, we, we do, we mix them up. Okay. Okay, this person has a little bit of, yeah. you know, on the big side, mm -hmm. we mix them up. Okay. For clients. So now I, I have to, I have to say, you know, we do live in a, a society where, you know, the, the looks are very, very important. Yes. But then again, some may have great looks, but then maybe not be able to connect with people as mm, well. Okay. So not to say, you know, they look pretty, but then communication <laughs> might be a challenge. I don't yeah. want to say that about, you know, um, about ladies, but yeah. that affects your client. For instance, yes. if there's forms to fill, yes. documentation to do at the entrance of an event, yes. how are you able to manage that? Okay, because most times, um, most times we have um, our ushers from the universities. Okay. Okay. Um, it's either they are um, the freshers or okay. almost done with school. Okay. So they're actually capable. Okay. You know, they can write, they can read. Okay. You know, so those are the kind of people hmm. that we look out for. So they have to be educated to a certain extent. Extent, yes, mm. to a certain extent. I was, you know, <laughs> pleased to have the opportunity to work as an usher for many years because okay. I realized I didn't need to have a degree yeah. to work in that particular industry. Yes, yes. But then again, um, not to say that, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not a bias, mm. but if, for instance, you do get uh, young people who are, who are not in school, do you still accept them? Yes, because I, I actually have... Um, I have um, what I call the young Omalicha hostesses. Okay. <laughs> you know, where I recruit uh, school leavers, okay. uh, people that are just uh, coming out of secondary school. Um, I use them for very low, uh, low key events. Okay. You know, like um, maybe a traditional wedding okay. reception. Okay. So I, I, I also use people like that. Any training happening behind the scenes? Yes, yes. We do trainings mm. online where we, you know, talk to them about um, emotional intelligence. Okay. When, we, when you go to an event, you need to have um, what we call empathy. Okay. You know, you need to be um, approachable. Somebody can look at you and will not want to come close. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? So yeah. You need to have that smile, mm. you know, on your face so that mm. a client, a guest, can actually approach you, mm. you know, to ask questions. In the end, being approachable is one thing. Yeah. But then there are some <laughs> events where you might have inebriated clients that have maybe drank a bit too much. Uh, and these are ladies we're talking about. Now, this is a real issue. Yes. Uh, that a lot of parents don't want to expose their young people to. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, they have a 17, 18 year old who maybe is in between schools at that point. Yes. They're about to enter school and they want to earn something. Yes. But they're scared of exposure to um, inebriated men yes. as such. Yes. So what sort of training have you given these ladies in that regard? Okay, we also, uh, we give them, okay, before, before, before this um, event happened, we also send out a contract where we okay. say, please, our hostesses shouldn't be molested or, you know, okay. anything like that coming, okay. you know, to them, mm. you know. So we also talk to the hostesses about mm. um, knowing how to say no or stop okay. when anything like that is happening. Mm. Yes. So they, right. they, they get trained okay. on that. All right. Now, it's yeah. definitely something that can't be discussed in just one interview, yeah. but it is an issue. And I'm so glad that you've already put some things in place to yeah. sort of prevent them from feeling too uncomfortable uh, yes. in some certain situations. Yes. We didn't even really get to talk about money. We should talk about that later, but we'd love to hear everyone's thoughts on what you do. Thank you so much for joining us Thank and talking to us much. about what Thank you do. You. Thank Use you. Use our hashtag, Wake Up Nigeria, on TVC. Uh, would you allow your young person to become a hostess, uh, an usher for events? It's a great business if you have uh, that focus. Musician, dancer, fashionista, and lover. Rosemary Alaba's strength is her versatility and, of course, her unique voice. Well, she's always been singing about love. Her song that picked top of Usher had love inside. She loved, 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 and this time she is in love. She is just a lover. It is great to have you, Rosemary Alaba. You are welcome. 
Thank you so much for having me back. I'm so excited. Are you, I also am. Are you in love? Yes, <laughs> I'm in love with myself. Don't start that. <laughs> <laughs> but you were not singing about self-love. That no, song. I wasn't singing about self. -love. That song was not self-love. No. Let's talk about the song. Yeah, I'm in love. What, what What's it about? What inspired it? I mean, just I feel like it's the best feeling to be in love. That's why I'm like, oh my god. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because love, it's a feeling. It's like, it's nothing. You can't describe it differently than just like, uh, mm. it's so intense. It, it is, it is, it is. And I was asking, is it uh, where you draw the most inspiration from when you see other people in love? Or because, because look, social media has really changed a lot of stuff now. There's a lot of stuff out there about love. And you see a lot of all oh, moments and mm -hmm. all of that, proposals and all of that. So one can catch inspiration from what you see from right. the outside. So when you catch inspiration, your personal love life or what you see on social media or anywhere else or for other people. I mean, definitely uh, my personal life and the, the lives of the people that I surround myself with. Mm. Um, if it's like heartbreak that I have to talk about in ah. my songs as well. How many times have you been heartbroken? One time, but that was like the biggest time. Ah. It was my first boyfriend as well. It was, and I, I thought I, I was going to marry him. He broke oh. your heart. He broke my How heart. How did he do it? Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? <laughs> How did he help it? He broke my heart. Ah. And how did you pick yourself back up after all of that? And you know what? Yeah. You want to hear the story? Yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm all ears. Well, okay. I was 19 years okay. old. Uh, I've been with him for five years. Okay. And he cheated on me Ooh. with my best friend. Yep. Where's that best friend now? Where's the <laughs> yeah, best friend? I don't now? know. I don't know. Yeah. I but that was the end of the best it. friend. Of I don't course. Know what do you mean? Like how, when she was my ride or die. Well, that's a how word. does this? How does this? Look, okay, let me tell you something. It's a good thing because look, I feel a best friend that does that can kill you. Right? I'm, I, I, I'm look, serious. Yeah. They can. If yeah. they are given the opportunity to put, if they're given that, no, they'll do not even start. They'll put it in and test it. Exactly. Thing. What? Yeah. How does? So I, I hear about this a lot, but I really like. I'm thinking about it. Somebody who I call my own friend going to right. that kind of like thing to me. Like my ride or die, my sister. How did you? How did you pick yourself back up from all of? Um, God. Uh, like, mm. I feel like um, that was, like, a really big test in my life to also, like, get to know myself even more, set boundaries for myself as well. Oh, um, yeah, protect yourself even more. Exactly. How has it been breaking those bounds now for other guys that have been trying? I mean, after such an experience, I it's mean, not going to be easy. At the end of the day, I have high standards. Uh, you have to meet up to these standards. I won't settle for less. Mm. So, um, yeah. Mm. And now that experience has... <laughs> Now let me give a shout out to my to my producers and my director who are, who are my, yeah, you guys should just calm down, calm down. She's a beauty, yes we know. You guys should oh, just calm down. You. But yeah, but you know, uh, that has uh, people that so this is a different thing about you. People that have had this kind of experiences, they tend to be cynical when it comes to love. Right. I know what I'm saying. I know I know people who have decided that look, it's done for me. Mm. But then how are you so enthusiastic about it, even after such an experience? It's literally God taught me how to handle all of this stuff. Um, you know, as much as I lost them in my life, I've gained so many great people in my life, and that's what I'm focused on. So it's not just even, it's, not, it's love in all aspects, to family, to exactly. friends. It's not just uh, intimate kind of love yes, as you wear. exactly. I like that, I like that. So uh, is this, is this the, uh, are, we, is, are we expecting anybody of work soon? Yes. Based off on also. Tell us about it. So the next single is coming out actually on Wednesday, on the oh. 27th of March, um, and it's called Ooh. More. More, yes. more love. <laughs> exactly, more love, because okay. I love love, mm. yes. But it's, this song is basically about, um, I'm trying to reach you, but uh, you're not picking up the phone. Um, Let me give my, I'll take off the phone. <laughs> Please. I mean, and I, basically I mean, him tells him, like, on I need peak. more attention, like I need, I need you more. Okay, okay, wonderful. But so, is, is, there, is, is this a prelude to some sort of an album or something, or an yes. EP and all of that? When are we expecting that? Um, so I'm dropping the EP uh, by the end of May. I'm oh. super excited about that as okay. well. Um, May is dropping the IP at the end of May. Yeah. <laughs> you hear yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I'm going to have a couple features on my EP as well. So. Yeah. Hmm. So moving up, there are other talents that you have. You, uh, you, you act also, you dance and all of that. Uh, how have you been able to explore that apart from singing, which you also do? Have you been able to explore that in other ways? 
You know, I, I was always like a very outgoing person. Um, my dad um, used to be an artist as well. My mom used to sing. She's very loud. She's Filipino. Mm. So uh, I grew up in a very loud musical household. Mm. Um, so I was always out there trying to make people laugh. So growing up, I knew I wanted to entertain somehow. If it's dancing, acting, singing, I just wanted to be on stage. That's what I knew. Um, so uh, when I was about 16 years old, um, I actually got into acting school. Mm. So I graduated from acting school. And from yeah. that day on, like once I graduated, um, I wanted to do music professionally. So that's how I started my music career. But have you ever, um, would, you, would you want to explore acting even more as yes. a career? Have you ever gotten into anything? Is there any project on the horizon? Maybe let's shout out to producers and directors there. Right. Rosemary Alaba, she studied it three years. So it's already there, you know. But have you ever done something with that? Uh, what are your plans? Do you, do you hope to do something with it? Yes, I didn't do anything in film yet, but I did uh, play some musicals. Uh, for example, you're a good man, Charlie Brown, or Spring Awakening mm. at the English Theater in Vienna. That was pretty fun. Um, but I definitely want to go into film more. Mm. Or a series, yes. Series, talking about series, I, I hear that uh, the K-drama bug has caught up with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you? It is, it is K drama it lovers, is. I menace, I was from your cousin, right? Right. What do you love about K-dramas? Um, I feel like, like the characters are very funny. They're very okay. funny, very uniquely funny. Mm. And the drama is just drama -y. If you had to pick a role to play, K-drama or any other words, a, and a perfect role for you, what would that role be? I would definitely want to play a superwoman. Yeah, do all the fighting and stuff. Have you ever had any training with choreography no, and all of that? But no. you'd love to. I'd love to. Well, with the way you look, you really could be a superwoman. Right? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so looking forward on the horizon. Yes, you mentioned that EP is coming up and all of that. The fans can watch out for that. This particular one is coming up and all of that. You're, you're pushing. You, you've, you've done quite well in Austria. Many people don't know that. You're a mm -hmm. big deal there. You know, but then that infusion into Afrobeat and all of that, how has the acceptance been so far? It's been amazing, mm. truly. I feel like uh, my people, my Nigerian people, I love you so much. Uh, they have always been supporting me. Um, they're rooting for me. They're so excited to, for me to even like expand my roots to the European market as well. That's, so. that's how we do. We love our own. Right. I mean, David should have decided to play for us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was young at the time. Don't blame him. Uh, no, 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 why, why would we blame yes. him? No, we'll blame him. How's he doing? I know he's, he's been injured for, for, for a while and all of that. But how's he doing getting he's, back recuperation and all of that? He's amazing. Mm. Like, he's walking, he's training, he's doing really well. He'll be mm. probably on the pitch soon god All is right. great send our best regards Thank to him you. wishing him the best and uh, we also wishing you the best Thank you're you such so a much. beautiful character to have around a favor sense and energetic and here's to more wins and more love no heartbreaks right no Thank heartbreaks. You. <laughs> in Jesus name, amen i love that okay do you have do you love a car have you taken a car, a car? um i i've had it before okay. to be honest to be really honest i yeah. didn't like it at that time when okay I had it. yeah yeah it's, it's okay not to like I'll it because it depends today, on what right? you try today and you will yeah. see, we'll see what yeah, you think exactly. about it exactly all right let's head over to the kitchen okay, cool. all right you all come okay, oh wow yeah exactly i'm so in love though. Uh, i'm in uh, love with the tapioca oh <laughs> chef alice thank you so much for everything you've done today akara and tapioca pudding beautiful mm. i wish we just had I the jambu gari by the side the what grape oh grape grape <laughs> grape akara so mike had this suggestion uh regarding adding fruit to the akara and chef alice decided to try it so she fried grape into the akara and i was just like what and she I'm actually about got to it done. this idea is so, mine <laughs> anyway it's it's grape yes inside akara yeah do not forget my name so <laughs> do not forget my name we have some sugar and i uh, added uh, condensed milk here okay would you like to add some to the pudding yeah sure okay so there's some sugar here all right you can sprinkle some on there Okay. And then, you like a lot of milk or just a little? Just a little. Just a little? Okay. Yeah. All right. So please have a taste of that. All right. And that's how it's done. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> Interesting, it's right? It's really good. Yeah. Mm. It's different. It's actually, yeah, it's different. So um, mm. she mentioned something. There's something called boba. It's a drink 
uh, that's usually ice cold. Right. But it's made with tapioca. So this is like a hot version of boba. Yeah. Okay. And when she said that, I was like, yes, that is so true. Mm. But um, we also want you to taste the akara. Mm -hmm. Now, there's grape inside that akara as well. You want to taste that? <laughs> mm. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. That's all we needed. So now we can cut that first part out in the Rose, edit. I'll put Rose, this one in. <laughs> I'm hot, broken. It's your fault. <laughs> I'm hot, broken. Mike, it is your fault. But you see, don't worry. <laughs> At least you've had heartbreak before, so we can be, yeah. we can understand ourselves on that level. Yeah. Okay. But Chef Alice, you did an amazing job. You got everything together. And I love the display as well. Don't you think? Mike? Yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank you yeah. for sharing your time with us and yeah. wishing you the best on your career. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. To the wonderful Thank show. You. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Great way to start the week, guys.